Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Raichu Place, and we're back in with another tour. So Sparrow 838 has kindly let me tour the True North Sanctuary. So I followed this one closely on YouTube because it completely blew my head away. And it is a truly amazing zoo. So I'm really glad that I get the chance to actually tour this one. So let's hop straight in. Okay, so we're going to start off at the actual entrance just so we get all the details. Okay, so, so this is where the guests walk in. So then we go up this little pathway. We've got all the little decals on the wall and as well as the animals as well. So that's pretty cool. What's that? Uh, oh, there the drone comes. They're pretty cool actually. I thought there were planes in the sky. <laughs> right, I'm just going to pop it into pause mode just until we get to any of the animal enclosures. So similar to the Ottawa Zoo, this one is based in Canada. So it's going to have a similar theme, obviously completely different building styles because it's two different creators. Okay, so we've got these little signposts here as well. These are cool. As well as these little statues going up the path. I like this bit as well. I imagine this to be kind of like a little nature reserve area. Kind of imagine like in a real life suit you can kind of walk around this after and stuff. Okay, so let's carry on. Okay, so just getting to the top up here. So we've got these really, really cool walls as well. I like these. I'm just going to have a look at what these are. Uh, so the European rustic stone walls, the East Asia unpainted, and the classic wall lamps. They're cool. Yeah, let's just come out of the, zoo, uh, of the group, sorry. Okay, so before I head into the main entrance, I'm going to hop over here. Uh, I'd also like to look at these. I'm going to come back at the end and actually have a look at this in nighttime mode. Because I'm looking at the kind of trajectory of this, I imagine this will all light up. So let's go over here and have a look at these over here and then we'll... Uh, well, actually, I can do them in nighttime mode when I'm there, actually. Okay, so these are the little tickets. These are pretty cool, actually. I like these. So this is kind of like if you've pre-booked online or something, you can come and collect your tickets, or you can just purchase your ticket straight away. Got a cool little huts as well. Right, let's hop around there before we head in because I just want to look at that in nighttime mode. So they're set to automatic, so they should just come straight on. So if we stand, I feel like this would be a good, good view. Well, let's just do that. Wow, that's amazing! I love that. Got like a little. That's really cool. Be cool if that was just in the sky because that kind of looks like the um, the northern lights and stuff. That's pretty cool. I know it's just a reflection, but still. Yeah, them lights are placed perfectly. Love that. Right, let's go back to daytime. So we always set it around twelve. Um, probably set it there actually. To be fair. Okay, so let's head on in to the main building. I'm going to pause that because there's a couple of water features in here as well. So I'm just going to go around the corner before I look down there. Okay, so I remember watching the video of this. This is everyone that has supported Sparrow's series so far. So there's um, a couple of names that I recognise as well, which is good. So that Aussie bloke I recognise from from my channel as well. Obviously Gunter's Gaming, that is the zoo that we toured last year. Uh, not last year, last week, sorry. And then we've got a couple of art prints as well. So these are really, really cool. Yeah, from our artist in residence. Okay, so also as well, so I've got a little plan for this one as well. I've been given kind of like a, a route to take. So what we're going to do first is we're going to do the woodland walk and then we're going to head on to the prairie pathway and then we're going to go up the mountain hike and then we're going to finish up 
um, go past the Boreal Cafe and then head to the Arctic Zone. So here, I like the detail here as well, so the admissions, this is really cool. So obviously as you know, um, no details are missed with, with Sparrow, everything is completely all detailed up and all, all documented which is really good. We've got these little infographic style things here. We've got a lady here surveying. She acts as kind of the um, the receptionist as such. So we've got all the all the prices and the membership prices as well. So that's cool. Okay, so let's head down here a little bit. So I remember watching. So this was the first episode, I believe, where she built this um, this entrance hall kind of thing. And I absolutely love this. This is dead cool. So, so you've got a ramp here and then you've got steps on the other side. So let's have a walk down and then I'm going to have a look at them from both angles. Yeah, so even the lights, so them lights are really, really cool. And they work in nighttime mode as well, I believe, from what I saw. Yes. So they light up really, really well. They look really, really cool. They highlight obviously this, this water feature here as well, which is cool. I really like them lights. And you can see they're made with the aquatic fencing. As you can see the curve. Really creative, I love that. That shot looks really cool. We've got all the all the cool stuff. Right, let's pop it back to daytime mode. I think it was about there last time, so let's head over to the side just to look at this. Yes, there's a couple of plants down here as well. Let's just have a look at the foliage and stuff. Yeah, so the detail's crazy here, that's so cool. I really like these walls as well. I've never actually used these walls before. Yeah, they European rustic stones, so that's the same ones that we saw on the way in. I feel like I need to start using them. There's so many items, I'm going to say this so many times throughout this tour, there's so many items I've not used. Right, so coming out of here, so we've got toilet block here, so that's kind of cool, it's all connected into, into the entrance. Okay, and then just up here, I presume that's where we go to, yeah, so there's the tickets that we came from, so that's fine. And then again, we've got these really cool walls. Okay, so let's head on in to the park. So you've got like the official kind of entrance gates here. Right, so I know there's a reserve here, but this is technically part of the prairie pathway. So let's just have a quick look and then we'll go from here. So the Blacktail Prairie Dog. So I say this is the... Um, Ooh, so much detail in here. Oh, look how he's sat. <laughs> he's just waiting. God, oh, this is crazy. And the shelter as well. I love the shelter. I don't think I've built for the prairie dogs just yet. I definitely need to. And we've got the, um, the little burrow hidden over there as well. So, standard. We've got to have a look in the burrow because there should be one coming in. There he is, look. Oh, these guys are so cool. Come on, tap and let's pop it back into explore mode. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so we're going to head down this way. So I'm going to have a look at the map over here as well. We've got the infographics as well, designed by Sparrow. So they are quite fitting to this uh, to the zoo, so obviously they're North America and Canada animals. Um, so live in large towns may consist of thousands. Jesus, I love these education boards. These are so much better than the in-game ones. So you've even got like little fun facts as well, a little scientific name as well. Ten out of ten for details so far. Love that. Right, let's have a look at the map. So this tutorial, if you haven't watched this already, was very, very useful. So Sparrow actually did quite kindly um, a little tutorial on how to make these through Adobe Illustrator. Um, so she did like step by step on how to make the buildings and how to do the reserves and how to do the paths and stuff. 
so it's really cool to see see these in um, in the zoo as well. So the woodland walk. So what can we expect from the woodland walk? So we've got American bullfrogs, butterflies, diamond terrapins, moose and beaver, red fox, common raven, the raccoon, the blue jay, the skunk, and the northern cardinal. Okay, so I'm quite excited for this because I know Sparrow went absolutely to town with the Averys. I know we've not got them in game yet, and we are desperately needing them. But Sparrow has made it work and put Averys in here. So let's have a look at the American Bullfrogs. So we've got one there. I can see one just poking his head. Oh, there's quite a couple actually. Yeah, we've got a couple in here actually. I do quite like the American bullfrogs. I do quite like frogs in general, to be quite honest. Uh, so the terrapins, they usually there's one. Uh, oh, there's one right in front here. Look, I'm so blind. <laughs> it's just kind of basking. Oh, is he cleaning the window? Okay, very good work. Huh? And again, even for the exhibit slot, we've got the. We need to zoom in to give these credit. So again, all custom designed, North American animal, it's got the diet, what they eat, their kind of social behaviours and fun little facts. So diamond terrapins have salt glands behind their ear which allow them to excrete excess salt. They would require, to, require visits to fresh water to avoid dehydration. So I never knew that, so that's good. Right, we're gonna yeah, we're gonna carry on this way. So we're gonna go over this bridge. I really like these these little fences here. What ropes are these? North African rope. Oh, so they're recolourable. So I think when you automatically select them in game, I think they're all multicolour. And I never knew that they was um, flexi colour. Let's just have a look. Uh, them waterfalls. I just love the waterfalls in game. That's again such another scenic shot shot there a lot. Got the reception entrance building in the background. This cool water feature. Such a scenic zoo honestly. It's so cool. Oh. That was a very quick run. <laughs> right, let's go down here. So we'll get around to that bit in a minute, so I don't want to, uh, to jump too far ahead. Okay, so it looks like we've got raccoons in here. So this Avery style is really, really cool as well. And look at them climbing frames. And I think I'm going to end up doing this at every single habitat, but it deserves that. Are they lights? Yes, they are. Oh my god, that's so cool. So it lights up the enclosure purple. I love that, that is so cool. Right, let's pop it back into daytime so we can see the animals. About 11. This is really, really cool. There's one just gone into it, or coming out of his little house there. Look. Climbing frame's are really unique as well. I like how that's built into the actual frame as well. That's really, really cool. Let's have a look at the, at the fun fact for the raccoon. Right, so the black mask around raccoon's eyes improves their vision by absorbing excess light to reduce glare and help them see in the dark. Again, that is something I did not know. And again, the animal is completely fit into the area, which is great. So these little facts are really, really cool because I never, well, obviously they're, they're there to, <laughs> to learn, aren't they? Um, right, okay, so greenhouse is repurposed. So we've got these kind of like classic style holes as well with more kind of education, I would imagine. They're really, really cool as well. All right, let's have a look over here. Okay, so we've got a striped skunk in here, so let's see if we can see him. He might be in his off-show area. Or am I being blind? Oh, there we go, I saw something move over there. There he is, look. 
They're just heading towards the um, the bubble machine. I forgot the name of that. Then. Let's go around because he's um, he's having a little nap or something. So I like. Let me just drop down. Drop down. So I just want to see it. This kind of level. I like this little kind of vegetable patch as well that's being grown in here. Oh, one's just coming out of the borer. So I think that's a baby one because that one's tiny lot compared to that one. Let's, um, we're going to have a look at the borer. <coughs> oh, so there's a couple. Oh, a lot. They're all sleepy. Yeah, and this is another animal I've never, never ever built for. And it's so cool. I don't like how the camera pushes you straight back to standard, even though you're in explore mode. Um, but yeah, let's have a look at the fun fact for the striped skunk. Okay, so did you know the striped skunk is immune to snake venom and is known to eat rattlesnakes? Now that's what we call pest control. I would not expect that, to be quite honest. But I guess it makes sense, the area they live in, there's going to be quite a few rattlesnakes. Well, that's another cool fact. Okay, so we've got another one of the custom maps here. Um, let's just get rid of that. Let's get rid of that as well. I thought I deleted that, sorry. Right, there we go. Okay, so another custom map. So they're really cool. Um, let's have a look at this kind of little food court area around here. Okay, so we've got a couple of kind of like standard A-frame benches. With the umbrellas as well. We've got this little patio heater as well. Is that all custom? Oh, that's an in game item. Oh, there's so many items in this game I've never never used before. Let's go around so I don't get burnt. <laughs> so these are the, I think these are called the European, yeah, European food trucks. So they're cool. So the, the little vendor stand has been added. I like that because that gives me kind of like a little kind of camping site vibe where there's just kind of like these little benches, a couple of food trucks. I know these are really cool. I like the idea of using these as well because there's a couple of different styles. Look, so you've got this style, got I think all three of them are actually different, but they all look really, really cool. I think I like this one's my favourite, I think. The style of food truck is, is really, really cool. And then we've got more more benches down here. Right, so let's head over this way. Let's just come out of the, the picnic area. Right, okay, so the, this is the butterfly trail. Okay, so we've got this conservation. Um, I believe that's... Uh, I think that is a custom image actually. Yeah, it's definitely a custom image. That's really cool. Right, let's head through. So we've got a couple here. So this is like an open one, it's not netted. So just looking at that down there, that looks so cool. So you can see the butterflies flying around in the background. And then we've got obviously the ones up here on the on the post as well. So they're kind of in their little, I'm not sure what you call these, they're kind of like little bug houses where they, I presume they lay their cocoons and stuff. So just a quick look inside. Select the tree. Right, okay, so we've got a couple of different, oh, keep looking at, sorry. Right, so what's the fun fact for the butterfly? Okay, so the tongue of the old world swallowtail is adapted to feed on flowers with many small thin tubular petals such as dandelions. So that's the little curly tongue as I call it. I don't think that's the right name for it. <laughs> but we're just going to call it the curly tongue. Okay, so I like these. So um, it's Chester Zoo in the butterfly realm. They actually have these and they put kind of like little bits of fruit on. And you can get quite close and see them feeding on the on the fruit, but it always smells funny because I presume the fruit's quite rotted and, and quite old. Right. Okay. So the monarch. So let's have a look. So monarch butterflies will 
migrate over 4,800 kilometers from Canada to Mexico, and they may take four generations of butterflies to complete this round trip. It's crazy. So that means obviously by the time they've made it from here down to here, they've had to kind of stop, reproduce, carry on, stop, reproduce, carry on, stop, reproduce, and then final stretch. That is a workout and a half. That's quite a long journey for a little butterfly. I just want to look at that down there as well because I just love seeing the butterflies. I really like how this is open as well because all the kind of butterfly things I've seen have always been netted or, or built over. But that is really, really cool. I like that butterfly trail. And just these little seating areas as well. These are cool as well. So the themes pretty much the same all the way through. So continuity, I love that. Right, so last time we went down here to see the butterflies. So we're going to head over towards the Beaver Lodge and the Education Station. Okay, so... I remember this build actually. I'm just gonna pop it into free lock mode because it's not in not letting me. Okay, so in here, so we've got the North American beaver and the moose. So this habitat is really really cool. I like this. We've even got a little baby moose as well, look. So this would be kind of the entrance for where it would drop the, the animals off. Got that lake as well, that lake is so cool. So that's always the detail I forget is kind of like the rocks around the outside of the lakes as well. And these little, tiny little rocks. Was just so effective, even the little tree kind of broken and laid down as well. Uh, that is really, really cool. Let's just see if we're able to walk on this bit. I presume there's um, a scenery piece underneath. Um, there we go, we can walk through, that's fine. Okay, so this is the Beaver Lodge, so this looks like a little education station. So let's just have a look. Okay, so North American beavers can remain underwater for up to 15 minutes. When in water, they may also slap their tail on the surface to signal danger. So they've got like a little danger flapper, which is pretty cool. Yeah, so again, North American beaver, quite fitting. Yeah, let me just drop, oh, drop the camera down so I can see this fact. Right, so moose attacks are the most frequent kind of animal attack in the Americas. They get very aggressive during mating season. That reminds me of a video I see all the time on TikTok. It's where a guy lets his dog out and the dog barks, it runs across when it's all snowy. I think it's like Alaska or something when it's snowing and the moose like kind of runs and tries to get the dog and he's like, whoa, 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 get inside, get inside. <laughs> well, that's just what that reminded me of. So this window kind of viewing is really, really cool. So I like this. So you've got the kind of dividers behind as well so they can't get too close. So again, this is quite quite a realistic kind of viewing area. So you've got, I know I said in the last one, I'm absolutely petrified of moose. But um, yeah, he's over there, he's keeping his distance. <laughs> we'll probably be able to see them better there actually when, when we go around. But this, this is really, really cool. You've even got like the little ledge. You can kind of imagine people kind of perching on whilst there's potentially like a talk going on here or something. Got a couple of the birds from the, um, I think it's Drax bird pack, I believe. Uh, I'll have a look when we get round to to the aviaries and stuff. Right, okay, have we missed? No, so we came in that way. That's fine. Uh, okay, so that's the Arctic zone. So I'm not going to go there just yet. I'm going to finish off the woodland walk. So I'm just going to have a look. Is this part of the Arctic zone? Let's have a look. Okay, so the common raven, so again this is used, I think Sparrow used the all of Drax bird pack animals. So obviously we haven't got birds in the game, but obviously this has been adapted to emulate so that we do have birds in the game, which is really, really cool. 
It's not something I've done just yet, but I have made kind of like A3s for different animals. Um, so as you can see, we've got one in the background there as well. So this is the common raven. So this is a really cool kind of aviary. We are honestly seriously missing birds in, in Planet Zoo. And then I know everyone keeps saying the same thing, but when are we actually going to get birds? Because we need them. And this literally just proves why we need them. Um, I don't know, I was going to say I'll go back down there and check out the fact that we've got one here. Right, okay, so ravens can often dis be spotted around wolves, and some of the ravens have been noted to create bonds with specific wolves for life. So they're kind of like a little companion to the wolf, really. Yeah, Corvus. I'm sure that's a planet on Star Wars. Might have to be corrected on that one. Okay, and then we've got the blue jay. Right, so let's have a look at the fact for the blue jay. Okay, so blue jay feathers are actually brown. The structure of the feather causes blue light to bounce off, making them appear blue. That's really cool. I'm literally, I never knew any of these facts. <laughs> You've taken so much time to look into all the facts and stuff, and that's really, really cool. Okay, so there's the blue jay. So these are just so cool. I know they're like tiny little scenery pieces, but they're so effective in like A3s like this. So you can even see, same with the the raven as well, you've got these kind of like little entrance holes as such for them to go in and out. But god, these aviaries are so cool. Because this is kind of what you would see in like a real life zoo, you'd kind of see like a row. I know Dudley Zoo kind of has this style, um, not the same, they've kind of got like flat tops and they've kind of got like little little bits on the side as well. Um, I miss... Oh no, let's have a look what it is first before we before we check. Okay, so the Northern Cardinal. So this was the last animal on the board for the Woodland Walk. So there's a little Northern... Um, oh, it's not called the Northern, is it? Oh, it was the Northern Cardinal. Sorry about that. Um, okay, so we've also got these railings as well. So this would be kind of to stop people going right up close like this and putting their hands through and potentially getting bitten. Um, I'm not sure if these guys would bother with biting. I'm not too knowledgeable on birds, so I don't know temperaments and stuff. Um, I know obviously there's some that are a bit more snappy than others. I like looking at birds, but I don't like being in the same cage as them. Because at um, Twycross Zoo, there's a lorikeet walkthrough where you can buy like a little cup of nectar and they'll just like swarm you and land on you. And I went through once and I didn't have a cup of nectar and one landed on me and I was like, oh my god, get it off. <laughs> but um, yeah, I made it out alive, which is good. Right, so the fun fact for the Northern Cardinal. Right, so Cardinals get their red plumage from carotenoids, I believe, a pigment found in the berries they eat. No berries, no red feathers. Okay, so I think that's a similar setup to kind of like the flamingo, because I think they have to eat something to make themselves pink as well. Okay, so we've just missed the moose actually walking down. Let's just have a look at this enclosure as a whole. So obviously we've got kind of like a walk around there as well, which is cool. Right, so we've got them, he's coming up here a lot. I think in real life I would be shaking, because I'm absolutely petrified. <laughs> they're just so big, I don't know why they're so big. Um, but they are pretty cool to be fair, always looking. I mean, they're, they're pretty cool, they're just very big. I don't think I'd like to pick a fight with one, if I'm being honest. But let's have a look at the... I've already had a look at the facts, actually. It's all about them being territorial. <clears throat> right, okay, so let's just have a look where we are. So, the... Prairie pathway, okay so we've done the woodland walk, we've seen the American bullfrog, we've seen the terrapins, the red fox, I've not seen the red fox, is he down? Oh he's, he's actually down here because I remember seeing that, we'll go back to the red fox actually. So this is the bison and I believe pronghorn, let's have a look, is it pronghorn? Yeah pronghorn, okay so the American bison, 
Okay, so bisons will rub themselves against strong smelling trees such as cedar and pine to keep the insects away. It's nature's bug spray. That's quite clever actually. So imagine in North America when it's hot, there'd be quite a lot of kind of gnats and mosquitoes and stuff. Okay, so the pronghorn antelope. So for some reason, I don't know why, I thought this was an African antelope every time I've looked at it in game, but I'm very mistaken on that one. So the pronghorn antelope are the second fastest land animal after the cheetah. Uh, they can run at speeds of 61 miles per hour or 98 kilometers per hour and they can also jump six meters in one bound that is crazy that's a very long there's one of the bisons look never seen a bison in real life i know there's um a rewilding project in kent in the uk to actually bring back the european bison um I'm not sure, I think they're still kind of like fenced off, I don't think they've actually been let out into the wild. I think they've just got like a very kind of, not limited space, but I think they've got like a woodland to explore and breed and repopulate kind of thing. So it's actually really cool to see all these enclosures in real life as well. Well I say in real life, in game. Um, after watching the series as well. Um, let's have a look in here, so the Lark Learning Centre. So the details as well. We've got like a little potting table. We've got a little duck in the basket as well. <laughs> cool. Let's have a look. Okay, so yeah, so this is like a little classroom area. So this, yeah, this could be quite cool. If you're on like um, a teacher on like a school trip or something, you would kind of stop off here and have like a little talk or something. You'd probably have the, the zookeeper or educational person, purpose, I can't talk. The educational person stood here, kind of teaching the kids or groups or whoever wants to come to kind of like an ed educational tour. And I presume you've got like kind of training materials and educational stuff in here as well. Yeah, that's cool. You've got like the classic school kind of wheelie. We used to have like whiteboards with the, uh, with the wheelie bits on. Uh, and then we've got, looking look in here, I presume these are kind of like some vivariums. Yes, we've got actually. Are they little spiders? I think they are actually. Are they little spiders? Kind of like spiders, slugs, ladybirds, beetles. I love this. This is so cool. So this is kind of like a little insectarium, I think they call them. A little pot of plant. You pop your bags and stuff in here as well. This is so cool. And the skylight as well. It's all the all the hidden details. Love it. Right, okay, so let's head out. So both of the actually there's a couple of buffaloes actually, but the buffaloes are here. And I remember on the video as well there was kind of um holding pen here for like a bull or something. I think they call them bulls. Um yeah, that's really cool. I like this fencing as well. Right, okay, and the red fox is here. I remember this one, so I remember that that style of fence then, because we went up there. So let's go down and see the red fox, and we can see the other angle of the. Um, what was one there, look? Smooth, there we go. You can see him just through the gaps here. Wagging his tail. So I really, really enjoyed this build as well when I watched it, and I want to go inside as well because there's another cool. Cool detail as well. Oh, one's just come out of that. Very like autumn vibes. I like this. Got other enrichment as well. Yeah, it's cool. I like these fences as well. These fences are cool with the with the overhang. It's quite good to have on carnivore enclosures. These are. And there's plenty of seating around here as well. So let's have a look at the fun fact for the fox. Oh, we've got one right there. Look. He wants to learn as well, that's fine. Right, okay, so the red fox grins when it's afraid or demonstrating submission, which has often been misinterpreted by humans as a sign of happiness. Okay, so now you know, if you see a grinning red fox, approach with caution. That's all you've got to do. This is cool, I like this. This is such a perfect um, habitat. See, I'm just gonna hop through actually. Sorry, foxes, I'm invading. But I want to see if we've got any in the burrow. 
No, we have him. Where is that's fine. Right, let's hop back out. Right, so again, it's popped me into free lock mode rather than explore, but that's fine. Okay, let's have a look inside. So we should be able to get through this way. So again, another custom map. These are so effective, like having these around. Really, really cool. I love that. So let's just make sure we've seen everything that we want to so far. So obviously we saw those at... Yeah, so we've done the prairie pathway, so we've seen the prairie dogs at the entrance. The bison's opposite, kind of here. Uh, American bullfrog, terrapin, and... They were at the start, and then we've done the butterflies. Red fox, which is going in there. The raccoons and the skunk, they were in the Avery style buildings. The moose and the beaver. The common raven, so there were all the Avery's at the end. Okay, so the woodland walk, after this, is pretty much done. Okay, so I can't remember if you can remember from last episode, so I was talking about these headphones. So these are the ones I was talking about. So there's 20 different types of headphones here, and each one of them represents a different call that the fox makes. So again, I just love the detail put into this. This is so cool. You've even got one. This is kind of how you'd expect them to be put back at a zoo. People just carelessly throwing them and stuff, which is cool. You've got one on the side, one on the floor. So this is all the educational stuff. And then these trees, I just love these. I remember watching these and I thought this is so clever to do this when you kind of like, not limited on space, but you want to kind of expand the indoor building. And you've got these custom backgrounds as well, which are really cool. I do wonder how you got these lined up though, because that is really neat to kind of cut it around this. Let's be, I'm going to be a little bit nosy. Okay, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, so it's two pieces, and I presume this is a big, yeah, that's fine. So even then, look, you've had to, the detail is crazy. So you've had to match each of these. Jesus, that's so cool. I kind of want to see this at night time as well. Let's just head back a bit. Just the details as well here, look. We'll have a look at the, oh, we've already had a look at the Red Fox fact as well. Let me just pop that in to oh, sir, madam, whichever one. Um, wow, that looks so relaxing. Love that. Ooh. So we've got like a little stool here as well. So um, I remember Sparrow actually talking about this in her video. This is kind of like somewhere where you'd imagine a kid to kind of stand and watch them kind of sleep in. So they've got a more private off-show area here as well. Um, because we're visiting, we're going to be nosy and have a look. So let's have a look in the area we're not supposed to go. But don't tell anyone. Uh, let's pop that back to... Whatever. Okay, so this is the backstage areas. So we've got all the all the stock here. So this is all enrichment. Um, we've got bins here. Tick boards as well. I assume this is for the foxes to make sure we've got um, all the stuff under control. So we've got the feeding bits in here as well, and then we've got a little ramp there. So as always, these guys are on, I think it's quality free when you see like the the full full works of the, uh, the, the meat and stuff. So that is cool. So even these lights as well. So this is something I never do, ever, is do lighting indoors. I've got to admit, my, my indoor game is quite weak. I don't... Um, I don't do that too, too much. Uh, where have we headed into here? Oh, this is the noose pen, actually. Okay, so that's cool how that's actually joined on. So he's just about to uh, go and feed them or something. And then we've got the kind of chipboard here. Right, did we... I can't remember which way I went. Did I go through this way? No, we didn't. We went through this way. Right, okay, and then if we head out, yeah, so we're back in the, the visitor area or such. Right, so we're back on the path. So we're going even the details here, look, where you've got the detail, the decal, sorry, against the glass. So I kind of imagine that's where the, they've kind of poured at the glass, kind of stood up looking at the guests or something. It's just the little details like that that fully make these builds come to life. And we've got the little hidden, I think that's an owl actually. 
like I said, I'm not very good with birds, but I think that, that looks like an owl, so I'm going to go with an owl. Okay, and then we come out here, and then it's back on to the main path. So we've done the prairie pathway. So I'm just going to head back up. And then I believe the next bit we're going to is called the mountain hike. Yep, so we're going to do the mountain hike next. So I know the arctic zone is behind there. And this is the boreal cafe. So yeah, we're going to do the... Yeah, we're going to do the mountain hike. So let's go this way to the mountain hike. I'm just going to check the map as well just to make sure I am still on track and still going the right way. Okay, so matching the colours. So this is the entrance building. Number five is the red fox. So we're about here. Number one is the prairie dogs, which is there. Okay, so yeah, the dark blue. So the mountain hike starts around here because we go up onto this really, really cool ledge, which I remember the build for, which was really, really cool. So just while we're going past as well, let's do another look at the prairie dogs, just while we're going. And again, the details here look. So we've got them kind of like mud marks as well, where you can kind of imagine the prairie dogs have kind of poured at the glass or something. Uh, the burrow. Let's have a look in here. Right, so come see us in our burrows. Okay, so that's a projection screen, that's fine. Okay, so this would be kind of where you'd come and see them inside inside the burrows and stuff. You've got all the education as well. So it's quite a cool place to come and actually have a sit down, I think. I can kind of imagine like a, a burrow can be in on here as well to show if there's any actually in the burrow. But I think you'd probably find me down there having a having a little sit down waiting. Right, okay, so through the doors. Right, okay, so the prairie pathway. Right, if we go let's have a look in the shops before we do the mountain walk. And then what I'm gonna do is when I come down that way I can look at this area here. So we've got a couple of shops raised up, so we've got pipe shop water, hot dog squad. Pea soda and the pizza pan. <clears throat> and then this is the other end of the. Yes, we've got a bison here. So this is the bison and the pronghorn. Um, let's go and have a look under this kind of like veranda kind of thing. So this is cool. I like the glass here actually. This is really, really cool. It's quite immersive as well. Yeah, so there's benches as well, so you can just sit and chill and look out onto the habitat. That's so cool. Okay, I'm not going to go too far down there, because I'm going to go up this way and join the mountain hike that way. Okay, and we've got this little kind of TP, TP area, little sit downs, little outdoor seating areas as well and some toilets. So I presume once you've grabbed your food you can come down have a little sit down in front of this this statue as well which is really cool and that's all all custom as well I think wow that is so cool the attention to detail is crazy it's them drones again I keep looking at them drones I keep thinking it's like a bird in the sky but I know it's a drone because I've seen it like four times we've got a little security camera as well and Little photo bomb by a drone. <laughs> right, so the mountain hike, so I'm so excited for this. I've been so excited for this for ages. Right, okay, so staff only. So this is their um, staff facilities down there, that's fine. Another backstage area. Right, okay, so we're coming up to something here. Right, just before I go any further, is this... what's this? Right, so that's the bear. Let's have a look at the timber wolves first. So, did you know that... oh, 
Right, so Wolf's Harm and I spend Howlin together to create auditory illusion of a larger pack. They use Howlin as a form of communication. So I've never actually seen or heard a wolf howl. I've seen a Liberian wolf and maimed wolves. So I saw a Liberian wolf at... Oh, there's one. So they had Liberian wolves at Blackpool Zoo. I only saw three of them though at the Wolf Ridge, which is quite a cool little habitat. I'm going to go over here and look at the... Um, oh. So I like checking as well which one... Yeah, so Jet. So these, I remember the build for these, these are actually named after crystals. And if we go up there as well, there's a little meet the pack, which we're going to go have a look at in a minute. So this one's Jet, and this one is Jasper. So alpha female and alpha male. We've got a little baby. Oh, wait. And then we've got Onyx. So they are raw crystals. So let's go up here, actually. I'm going to go up and have a look at the... Um, because there's a little meet the pack thing up here. And this fencing as well, this is so cool. I love this. And we've got a little Avery here as well. So before we go up actually, we're going to have a look in the Avery. So, like I said, I'm no expert, but the Great Grey Owl. Let's have a look. Right, okay. So the Great Grey Owl is the largest owl in North America. This is partly an illusion, however, as feathers account for most of its size. Okay, so that means that this owl kind of has bigger feathers than its body is kind of thing. And that reminds me of the, it was a video of, well, a picture of someone kind of picking up an owl and showing their legs. And they've got the weirdest legs ever, but still pretty cool creatures. <laughs> it's just the legs, they've got like proper weird looking legs not what you would expect at all. So this is the wolf overview kind of thing. So these bits here, so these are what I was on about because when when you watch the series back, let me get to a bit. So meet the pack. So we've actually got onyx here. So this is like a little block of onyx. And then if we go down here as well, so we've got another meet the pack, and then we've got the crystal here, which is Jet, and then we've got the crystal here, which is Jasper, and then we've got two in-game images, which is really cool. And I think, have we only got, yeah, that's fine, we've only got the three, and then we've got the information board as well. So this habitat is crazy, and we've got this hidden in as well, all of that. Oh, there's Jet jumping around, and then... That one's Jasper. Yeah, Jasper. So I'm getting good with the names now. So I love these habitats where it's like a water note kind of thing. Um, I like, there's quite a few of these kind of habitats where it's like a, a water moat and then gorillas. I think that's really effective as well. Um, but yeah, I really like this habitat actually. This is really, really cool. Oh, I've got these as well. What's, the, what's this um, kind of like barrier made up of? Well, like metal banding, I'm not going to try and say that. Portcullis, portcullis, I think. I don't know. I don't know what that is, but that is really cool. I like that. Really adds to the theme as well. Oh, cool. Right, let's carry on. So we've looked at the wolves. We've seen the we've seen the owl. Um, I know there's the grizzly bear as well. Let's. I'm going to head back so I don't want to miss the the grizzly bear. We're gonna just head back and then we'll we'll hop around this way. I think I got a little bit too excited for the wolves and um, probably should have done the bear first. Uh, okay, we can't go down that way. So the bear was a little bit further up actually. So it was just here a lot. So we'll just do a little loop round. I'm gonna check the map as well just so I don't lose my my bearings. Right. Okay. So so number thirteen is the timber wolf. So we're about here. So if we go through, 14 is the grizzly bear, we've got the great, the great great owl, uh, number 18, so we've got the bear and the cougar, and then we've got the reindeer, and then we can loop around, we can have a look at the, the doll sheep, and then we can go up this really, really cool, we won't go too much into that because I want it to be a spectacle for the eyes on that. So we've got a little measure up against the bear, so that's cool. 
good little uh, photo opportunity as well. And these little red salmons on the floor. I think that's a red salmon actually. That's what the uh, red salmon is. Oh, there he is, look. Oh, cool. Yes, I remember that name actually. Um, and the build as well, there's a kind of like a cargo or a transit tunnel under here. And Huckle was named after Sparrow's visit to one of the national parks, I believe. Um, I do remember like little details of things, like completely random bits, and I don't know why. <laughs> so we've got the big grizzly bear here. So this enclosure for him is really, really cool. We've got these kind of like anti scratch and anti destroy, I don't know what they're called, anti climb things as well. So let's have a look at the fun fact for the bear. Okay, so grizzly bears hibernate for five to seven months of the year. In preparation, they can gain as much as 180 kilograms of weight to survive this time without eating. So that is actually surprisingly a fact that I did kind of know, because if you follow the Whipsnade Zoo in UK on Instagram, in the last month or so their bears have just come out of hibernation, and they're very, very playful, they're kind of running around in the water and stuff, having the time of their life. Um, so more custom artwork as well, and we've got this, I love this statue, this is really cool. That needs to be lit up at night time because I want to see what it all looks like. This is so cool. So even the trees are lit up, but in that sky, the contrast between that is so cool. Another, another scenic, scenic view over the park. We've got to look at the nighttime mode at the top of the mountain as well when we get there. So I think that's really cool. Right, let's head down this way. Okay, so we've seen Hook call the grizzly bear. And I remember the being a little cave down here. Is he in there? We're gonna have to go into free lock mode because Oh he's using it a lot. Oh, he's so cute. So I've never seen a brown bear before, actually. The only bears I've ever seen is polar bears, sun bears, Andean, forward slash spectacle bear, whatever you call them. All right, let's have a look at the backstage area for the bear. And I'm not going to go down there because there's another animal there, which we are going to go to in a minute. So we've got the little food preparation areas. We've got the meat in the fridges as well. Um, some aprons or towels here, and then we've got a little kitchen area, a little checkboard as well, just to make sure the bear is eating as expected. Um, let's have a look, see what's up here. I think this is just the staff builder. These lights are cool as well, I like that. Oh, stop. That sometimes happens if there is um, scenery, but not to, uh, not to worry. We can just fly through where we've been already. So let's have a just kind of like a fly-in overview of this. Yeah, I'm really impressed with this. This is so cool. I like how it's really sunken into the ground as well. Right, okay. And then I'm going to hop it back into explore mode. So I don't need to check the map because I'm still still kind of on track to where I should be. Okay, so if I'm not mistaken, there should be a cougar in here. Yep, that's the one. I can see him just there. Let's have a look at him before he goes into his... Um, just heading back into his uh, offshore area. I like this climate frame here. This is cool. I feel like it'd be really cool if you were stood here and you were just kind of sleeping here. Gonna hop into free flight um, or free lock mode in a second as well. Another lot. Okay, so the fact for the cougar. So despite being the fourth largest cat species, cougars are not considered part of the big cats as they lack the bones and organs required to roar. And I did not know that. I don't know why I thought they could roar, but obviously not. So this fencing as well. So it's carnivore fencing as well. It's got the overhang, which is cool. 
So I really want to lock. Yeah, so this would be cool. I can kind of imagine it curled up and sleeping here, actually. There's another, because they are actually called mountain lions as well in America. Um, so I can also imagine him kind of curled up sleeping here and you can look down. Um, plenty of climbing for him. Another perch here where he could sleep in the sun. Right, okay, and then let's have a look down in... Yeah, so he's sleeping in here. So this is this is where we was before. I didn't want to go down because obviously the Google was here. So I didn't want to kind of do the backstage area before the main bit. Okay, so what's his name? So we've got Edith the Cougar, Cougar sorry. And female. So I kept calling him him, so I do apologise. Okay, so let's have a look at the backstage areas. Okay, so we've got all the props here as well. This is cool. So all the enrichment. So again, all the de even the pallet stock. These would have arrived on like pallet loads, and they just kind of wheel them in. The mechanic just been to check all the fencing as well. We've got a little graphic here as well, and the water butts as well. So, kind of chipboard with the the notepads and stuff on. So this here. So this is. Oh yeah, so this, I remember this actually. So this is where the animals would kind of be delivered to. So they'd come into here, and then the gate, yeah, so the gate would be open and they can go through. And then, pretty much same again with the with the bear as well. So this would kind of slide either up or down, and the bear's able to come in. So that's like the transportation area to get them in and out of the, um, for example, if they breed or something and they need to, to move on to another zoo. We can collect it from from this area. Right, okay, so let's just have a look at this. From it's quite a big enclosure, actually. This is. We've got a right paddock, haven't we? She, sorry. Yeah, she's got um, a very very cool cool enclosure. Loads of rock work, plenty of foliage as well. No details missed, as always with Sparrow. Um, all the enrichments blended in quite nicely as well. Right, okay, so let's hop back into explore mode. Just want to check where I am actually. Um, what's this area down here? Let's have a look. Okay, this is like a cool little rock garden actually. Huckle the bear as well here, look. The statue of him. Right, so if I go up here. <clears throat> excuse me. Just past the toilets. And then we will end up at the doll sheep. And that's where we're going to end up in a minute. Just do free look for this bit, sorry. Okay, so that's where the wolves were. And then we've got the doll sheeps here, so they can traverse all of this area. So they can climb up to here. Obviously you can see one there a lot, climbing up. So again, this is a really, really cool, really cool enclosure. And then we've got this kind of little painting as well. So it's just little details that add so much effect. So imagine if you were kind of stood here, you'd see the mountain, and you come round, and then you kind of see something very similar. So cool. Let's have a look at this in uh, in nighttime mode, actually. Oh yeah, I remember this actually. Yeah, because I really I need to start using these lights because it's so cool. I'm sure you can move. I don't want to move it too much, but I'm 100% sure you, yeah, you can move the, the kind of angle. But I'm not going to amend anything. I'm going to leave it as it is. There we go, it's just reverted back. And if we pop that back into daytime mode, so it's always bang on 12, we'll stick with that. 
Okay, that's really, really cool. I'm very impressed with this. So cool. Toilet block as well. The rock garden. Okay, so... This is the way we want to go. So this is what I've been very excited for. Alright, so off we go. Up the mountain. So if you haven't already, you should really, really check this out. I fully recommend to check this, this series out by Sparrow. Um, plenty of inspiration, plenty of tutorials, and just an overall chill vibe. It's a very, 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 very good series. I fully enjoyed it. Um, there's another one as well. There's a couple of series, actually. Um, she's just launched one, which is kind of like a, a rewilding project as such, um, but it's more of like storytelling. So... What Sparrow wants people to do is kind of tell the story and kind of work out where it's going next. So I'm quite excited to see how that one unfolds. Um, but the first episode on that one was actually quite impressive. I really enjoyed that. So again, let's just check the map. Okay, so we've got a couple of viewpoints. So we're at the viewpoint now. So these are the viewpoints. So you can kind of imagine you put your, um, your 50p, 50 cent in there. You can kind of have a have a gander down there and have a look. Right, so let's head on this way. Should we go through the cave? Ooh, decisions. Um, let's go through the cave and then we'll, we'll loop around because it's one loop. So let's go through this cave. Okay, we've got the lift here as well. So it kind of reminds me of like an old mining facility. Uh, yep, that's exactly what it is. There we go, a lot of details. Okay, and then this one, we've got the bald eagle. Right, okay, so when a bald eagle loses a feather on one wing, it will lose a feather on the other in order to keep the balance. It's quite clever, actually. That's so cool. It just makes you realise how much we actually need birds in Planet Zoo. Like, we are missing them so much, and this Avery is wild. Such a perfect place for the bald eagle as well. Let's make it go up a little bit. So much work's gone into this lot. This curve as well. So, I probably wouldn't say Avery's are my strongest point. But this one is nailed to a T. It's really, really cool. It's just, um naughty and stand on this. So literally there's like little perches and stuff as well. It all lines up so nicely. And we've got the little bold eagles here as well. So this is from the from the bird pack. It's available on, on the Steam Workshop as well. Um oh, I've been naughty and jumped over <laughs> all the barriers. Right so let's have a little art look onto the zoo. Oh there's the cougar. So she's just on a big run all the way down there. Uh, can we see a hook call about? Uh, he's probably still in his cave actually. And then if we go down here, we might be able to see Jet and Jasper and Onyx. I can't see them just yet. Oh, there we go. I think that's Jet. It's Jet, Jasper, yeah, that's Jasper, and that one's Jet because he's the bigger one. Onyx is the little baby, but I'm not sure where the little baby is actually. They're normally not too far, so it's probably around here or something. So just the scenery in this is crazy. So that's our next destination here. So we're going to go down, we're going to have a look. So this is a cafe and a gift shop. Um, oh, you can see the moose. And then behind here is the Arctic Zone. So they're the two places that are left to explore. So if we head down, oh, I wanted to look at it in nighttime mode actually. Let's have a look. Whoa. That's so cool. I love that. That is so cool. Such a great shot. But they can see the fire lighting up the wood there for that um TP style build as well. Ok, 
Okay, so let's carry on. So, just going to head back down the side of the mountain. Uh, let's check what we've got here. Uh, the doll sheep, that's fine. <coughs> Excuse me. Right, so, let's head all the way down. Okay, so just while we're heading down as well, um, if you are really, really enjoying these tours that I'm doing, I would love to tour more of your zoos. Um, if you are also enjoying the content that I'm putting out as well, please subscribe. Um, I know quite a couple of you have from the previous tours as well, so I'm really grateful for that. Thank you. Um, also drop a comment as well, what's your favourite enclosure in Sparrow's Zoo so far? Um, let me know. Um, I'm sure she'll see all the comments on this as well, which is pretty cool. So off we go down to the Boreal Cafe and Gift Shop. We've got some reindeers here as well, so let's go take a closer look at them before we go into the cafe. So distracted by the nature, <laughs> just looking up at all the trees. Right, let's have a look at this um, this little viewpoint here. So this is the reindeers. So we've got quite a lot of the um, what's this moss called? The caribou moss. So I love the texture that this gives. We've got all the enrichment items as well. So it's quite a wild um, wild enclosure actually. I quite like this. Kind of gives me the vibe that um, the reindeers have just kind of merged, kind of forged the um, the landscape and stuff and not much has been has been changed and stuff which I really really like. So you've got like the rock work and I feel like the trees have been there quite a while. The only thing they probably have to do is just do a tiny little bit of rock work and just kind of guard the trees a bit. So this is really really cool actually, I really like this. They've had a little baby as well, what's his name? Nimbus. So correct me if I'm wrong, but Nimbus is also the broomstick. I had to think then, the broomstick from Harry Potter. I think it's the Nimbus 2000 or 2001. I'm not sure. Can't remember. So we've got Alto, Stratus, and Cirrus. So he's the alpha male. So their welfare's at 100 as well. They are kept in tip-top condition, so that is certified that Sparrow would make a very, very good zookeeper. So let's have a look at the fun fact for the reindeer. Okay, so the North American reindeer, the caribou, migrates up to 5,000 kilometers, the furthest of any land animal. That's like walking around a zoo 500 times around the zoo. That is a lot of walking. I know for a fact I'd be on the struggle bus doing that. <laughs> I don't mind walking, but when um, when we was in Amsterdam, me and my friend did thirty three thousand steps in one day, and it absolutely killed me. I had blisters all over my feet. But yeah, it was good. We did just under a hundred k steps in about four days. I just want to have a look, and I'm not meant to be in here because this is the backstage area. But I just wanted to have a look at the. Ah scenery so it just kind of blends straight in so it kind of looks like they they own own the woodland behind as well which is cool yeah. got a little baby nimbus but yeah his name was nimbus that's fine. this is really cool and again it's another sunk i love sunken enclosures they're my absolute favorite oh that made me jump out there sorry <laughs> and we've got the little separation pens as well just in case they need to use them and they're stacked with food. That's really cool. I like this viewing window as well. It's not something you see often in, in zoos, kind of like a viewing window straight in like that. But that is really, really cool. And I feel like we've got to view this in nighttime mode. Yes, we do. I knew that would be worth the while. Makes me feel all Christmassy. Yeah, that's really cool. Right, okay, back to 11-ish, usually stick it between 11, oh, what can I display here? So these deer antlers are really cool, are they an uh, in-game item? Oh, they are. Again, that's something I've never seen before, got that little TP structure in the background as well, TP with the ring. Right, let's just make sure we're not missing 
This isn't any fun. Oh no, a free walking swan. We need to go around and see them in a minute. Okay, so we're back at the front of the bison and the pronghorn antelope. So our next stop is the Boreal Cafe and Gift Shop. So let's just have a look at that in nighttime mode as well. Yeah, so amazing as expected. All lit up nicely. The light work is really good and really effective. So it's all positioned really, really well. It's all kind of underneath this so it doesn't leak out as such. So I love that, that's really, really cool. Okay, so let's just pop it back to our standard time. And then let's have a look. I always find the characters in the zoos walk really, really strange. Is that a security guard again? <laughs> it's just the security guards, they walk around like they're looking for trouble all the time. <laughs> Got some custom images. Let's go, we need to see them. We need to give the, uh, the images that's been placed here as much credit as possible. So these conservation boards as well. Yes, we've got some real life images. They just look so fluffy, don't they? But I really don't think they'd appreciate being stroked or, or even hugged. They'd probably kick off. Okay, so the mountain hike is done. So the only places we've actually got left to do is the Boreal Cafe and the Arctic Zone. So this might be a longer tour than previous, but I don't want to rush around and miss details, I'd rather it be a little bit longer, a little bit more chilled and we can, we can appreciate the finer details more. So we've got these little these little notepads as well. Got the details as well for saying... And I don't think any of these are used in the modular gift shops either, I think these are all... Yeah, they're all... Created as well, wow that is crazy mugs as well so this is obviously before the modular gift shop came out although I probably wouldn't use the modular gift shop to be quite honest um, I can never get them working so these I presume these are kind of like water bottles you know the ones with kind of like the hooks and the, the screw tops like the big tank looking ones um, we've got some kind of arts and crafts stuff here uh, buy one get one free uh, you've got tiny little espresso, are these little espresso cups? Yes, and then you've got taller ones and kind of like flasks and stuff. Um, this is the crystal cabinet, I do remember this bit actually. So this is kind of like where you can purchase a crystal if you want to. And then there's another one over here as well. So we've got some more merchandise here as well. So the colours as well, they all... So it's the same colour palette which is really clever. I've got another one of my favourite trees as well. God I love this, this is so cool. Right okay another crystal and we've got like a little amethyst geode I presume. Which is really cool. We've even got like the little tags next to it as well. So in real life it kind of say like the crystal name here. But that is just so cool. Even the cabinets are really really cool. Um, and you've got some, some bottles of pop as well here. Um, I presume they are, or juice or something, some kind of like handmade stuff. I remember this as well, so this is like a pen station, so you know how you get them sheets where you rip them off and you can test the pen and stuff. So you've got like little notes here as well, Sparrow was here, a Woo, uh, TNS which is True North Sanctuary. And we've got some cuddly toys as well, oh, that was not meant to happen. Oh dear. Right, let's um let's try that again. Sorry about that. <clears throat> kind of jumped me up onto the onto the roof. <laughs> so yeah, so take me home. So let's see what it says. So twenty five percent of the proceeds from the plush animal purchases goes directly back to the care of the animals. We love that. We love the welfare stance on that. These are really cool. I think I prefer these actually to the in-game ones because I think the in-game ones are a little bit kind of really like curvy and stuff. I don't, I don't really like the the in-game ones. I like the ones that have um, been created here. Is that a 
I thought that's Capybara, but it's uh, a beaver, I think, actually. Yeah, it would make sense because we've got beavers in the zoo. Okay, so the Boreal gift shop. So we've even got a little bag sale or So obviously if you're from the UK, I don't know if any other countries do this, but in most of the shops you do have to buy your own bag. They're usually 10p or up to 50p or even up to a pound in some shops. It's, it's quite crazy. Um, but yeah, it's not the greatest, but it's better for the environment. Okay, so let's have a look at the menu. So it's probably going to make me hungry. <laughs> So the Boreal Stone Baked Gourmet Pizza, the Grizzly Deluxe Quarter Pounder Burger, uh, Loaded Sweet Potato Timbers, and then the Ice Cream Sheep Mountain and the Butterfly Tea Cake Platter. So they're all like themed around the animals as well, which is really cool. Um, is this... oh my god, yeah, this, so this is actually a functional restaurant as well. So again, this is something I've never, never used before. I've never played around with the restaurants. So you've got him chopping up. The, the chef, and then we've got the uh, another chef here. <laughs> he looks a bit lost. I don't know if he knows what he's doing. <laughs> I think he's meant to be cooking. What's he cooking? <laughs> he's just wondering what's happening. Oh yeah, this is really cool. Boreal Cafe. And I remember these as well. Sparrow actually made all these separate. So she used, let's have a look, so I remember having to invert all these. Yeah, so the Australian signs, the Indonesian stained wood pieces, and the European shutter hinge. So she actually made all these stools, so these are really, really cool. And all the details on the back here, you've even got them little juice bottles as well. Look, oh, this is so cool. And also as well these details here, you've got the little salt and pepper shaker, sorry I didn't, didn't pop down and have a look at these. So welcome to the Boreal Cafe, so you've got pepper, salt, and you've got like them kind of pumps where you put like your plate of chips underneath and pump it on or you get like a little sauce, sauce pot or something. A little first aid kit as well, you've got all the, all the stock and I presume there's like fridges and all sorts underneath. Right, okay, and then we've also got the outdoor area as well if it's nice and sunny. You can have a look out to the um, to the bison and the pronghorns. So let's just have a look. So I've not properly viewed it from this angle yet. I need to check what these below grass. This one as well, what's this one? That's buffalo grass dry. So they're really effective in habitats actually. I really really like them, they're dead cool. And again it's another another sunken one and I absolutely love sunken habitats. Right, okay, so into the Arctic zone. So I'm really excited for this. I've said that about every section, I've been so excited to tour the whole zoo. <laughs> right, so this should be Three Roman swans, and I see one here, so let's go and have a look at him. So, another seating area. And then we've got some, I believe, Canadian goose. I'm going to be in trouble if I get that wrong. <laughs> we've got another swan here, and then pelican. I'll be very, very impressed if I get all these right. That's the two pelicans, an actual swan in game. So, that's Galen. So he is a mute swan, and then, oh yeah, kind of the goose it says there, that's fine, okay now, what does, is that a pelican then? Yes, look at me now, my goose, my geese, uh, another kind of the goose, and that is a duck, know that one. This is really cool, I love this little pond, you've got like the little kind of outlet pipe there as well. The reeds as well, they really add to any kind of water water feature. So cool. Uh, I came over to see the swan walking around and it's disappeared. <laughs> Where is he? Oh, it's probably gone back. That's me looking at the geese and stuff. 
distracted by the birds. Right, let's have a look down this way. Yeah, I think he's um, he's hot back in there actually. So this is really cool. So I think even though these are still, oh my god, what's that? Then that's a baby one. Even though these are still, because these ones are moving, it adds the illusion of them being real. I'm just gonna stand on here. So do you know what I mean? So you've kind of got these moving around. You know, if you kind of look at it like this, so if we kind of look over this angle, you've got the moving, it just kind of offsets a bit, it looks quite cool. Right, so let's head up here. Got another A3 or something here. Let's have a look. Right, so. So this is the polar bear centre. So I want to save that towards the end because I really want to go into the cold dome. So before I go in there as well, there's something here that I want, oh, just want to look at. So I love this. So this gives me the vibe that kind of this was the the back of the zoo and then they had like further investment and was able to kind of create like a really modern facility so that's really really cool because it's very very modern here um let's have a look down here i love these all right so we've got the snowy owl so what's the fun fact for the snowy owl okay so snowy owls are the heaviest owl because of the amount of feathers they have they need a lot of them to keep them well insulated in the arctic so that's an arctic bird so that's understandable so there he is, looking at himself in the mirror. We got another one in. Oh, I've got one here. Look, looks like Hedwig. He's really cool. Right, okay. And what we got over here? The Arctic fox. Love these. I've just seen one, but I'm gonna do this before I go anywhere. Okay. So the poor pads of Arctic foxes are completely covered in fur to help them with the cold climate. They are the only native land animal found in Iceland. I didn't know that. So again, these these decals on the window are so effective. Oh, there's so many of them. We've got a little snow. We're going to have to jump in. Sorry, I'm going to have to go in the enclosure with them. Just to see them close. Oh, They're just so adorable. I love these. I've only ever seen these once and they were in um, Dudley Zoo in the, in the old polar bear habitat. Oh, they're just so cool. I wish we had Arctic foxes in the UK. <clears throat> okay, so. Explore mode, let's carry on. So I think here as well, I think it was probably best yeah, so I was down there. Let's have a look, see what's up here then. Oh, okay, so this is more to the reindeers. Or have I doubled? Oh no, this is the back. So this is the off stage. We walked here and we walked in and looked out that way. Okay, that makes sense. Cool, cool. So we're going to do this loop here. Right, so we've got the whooping crane. So this, wow, this habitat is crazy. I need to look at this from high up. So unfortunately we've not got this in the game. Um, but, again, Sparrow has pulled it out of the bag and made this absolutely work. It is so cool to add these, these little animals. Um, so these are from the bird pack as well. But these are so cool. Just love this. This is just very, very cool. Right, let's have a look at the um, fun fact. Okay, so these cranes are able to fly for 10 hours straight and travel up to 750 kilometers at a time. That's 10 hours flying. I'd be knackered out. Oh, we've got one in here a lot. So I think they're very similar to the red crowned crane, but obviously they are a completely separate separate animal. So um, yeah, we need we need birds. I'm gonna say that so many times. <laughs> we need birds. <laughs> right, okay, so we're gonna head to the cold dome. So 
I just want to make sure I don't miss anything in the Arctic, the Arctic zone. Right, okay, so. Okay, so food court and gift shop. So we came around here, so we came around the back. We went around. Oh, we could have gone that way. But I didn't see that path, so that's my own fault, but not to worry. So, number 20, we've seen the Arctic Fox and we've seen the Snowy Owl. We've just done the loop around the Whooping Crane. So then we're going to head into 23, 24, 25, 26, and then this is the, the polar bear at the back here. Right, okay, let's carry on. So straight into the cold dome. So just the architecture on this is crazy. Let's just have a, just have a look from high. Wow. I remember watching this and it just, <laughs> I would never be able to do that. The patience you had building this was crazy. So I remember you having to do like one big circle, flip it on its side, rotate and then flip half of the big circle around to make this this shape kind of thing. But oh, it's really, really impressive. So effective as well. Right, let's have a look. So we've got king penguins and seals in here. So let's have a look at the king penguin. Oh, look, they're all out of. Oh, we've got one swimming. Oh, is he going to use? Oh, I thought he was going to hop up and out of there, if that's what they do with them. So cool. Oh my god, we can see them underground, uh, underwater as well. So again, these I'm obsessed with these decals, I love them. So cool. Let's have a look at the fun fact for the King Penguin. Okay, so the record for the deepest dive by King Penguin is 343 meters, while the longest recorded time submerged is over nine minutes. That is crazy. So I presume these are actually all connected. Yeah, so we've got the little... Oh yeah, there we go. Look. So they are both connected, that's really cool. We've got more, more education here. I love these penguins, they're really cool. I don't know if any zoos in the UK actually have king penguins. I think I've only ever seen... Oh, there's one here. I think I've only ever seen Humboldt, African... I think that's it. I think they're the only two that I've ever seen. I know there's some at Sea Life in Birmingham. Um, but which type they are, I can't remember. What I'll do is, whilst I'm having a look in one of the exhibits, I will have a quick Google and just see which uh, which species they are. Uh, let's see if we can see the seals in the offshore area. This offshore area is really cool, really effective. You've got like a little sliding gate to use as separation if needed. And that kind of, it's like a little, like the pool to kind of jump straight in, which is cool. Right, okay, so the grey seal. So grey steel, Grey seals, not grey steel, <laughs> um, can stay underwater for up to 60 minutes thanks to their ability to slow their heart rates down to preserve oxygen. I honestly think it's so crazy and so fascinating how animals have adapted to live in the wild, like how certain ones have adapted to combat certain things that didn't particularly help them before. I love these pillars, these are really cool. These are the aquatic rocks. Oh. oh, there's one coming in. Is he coming up? <laughs> He's doing that thing again. I was so entertained by these last time. Oh, there we go. Oh, coming out. Oh, there's enough one. Oh, no, he's dive back down. We'll see if we can catch them outside. I just want to just take a moment just to appreciate all this, actually. Just so I love this. Like I say, this is this gives me like the vibe that the zoo has come into funding or something and had like a really modern modern extension done. But it's still so in themed with, with the overall area of the zoo. Right, okay, so if we go down here, so the cold dome. 
Okay, so we should be able to see the seals out here. There's one there, look. We've got a really big pool, actually. Let's go around here. So I know there's... Yeah, so this, this is realistic. I love this. So this is kind of what you see at zoos, when it's like an outdoor pool and stuff. Especially on, like, penguins and stuff. So obviously they're going to be in and out and creating a bit of dirt in the water a lot. There he is, look. Having a little swim around. We've got these little things as well where they can pop up and see what's happening. I love these. These are really cool. Right, okay. So the viewing gallery. So I remember this one. So this is the polar bear. Oh, is that him in the background? Nope, that's a drum. Well, like Nora said that. <laughs> So cool. I'm sure we will find the polar bear at some point. But this viewing gallery, let me just go all the way to the top. So just, this is so cool. We've got a little snow cannon there as well. Which will kind of like chuff out snow every now and then. So this would be really cool as well if all the kind of polar bear talks happened in here. So kind of sat down, a lady kind of talking here, oh, there he is, look. Just awaken from his slumber. <clears throat> is he going to come in the water? Hopefully it does. Oh, he's gone behind the hill, oh. He might even be over, going over that way. He's quite big to be fair. He looks massive. Please come this way. I want to see him go in the water. Okay, so I just had a look as well. So the... Oh, he is coming in the water. So whilst we're just waiting for him to come over. So the other penguins that I have seen are Gen 2 penguins. So they have them at Sea Life Centre in Birmingham. Um, oh, this is cool. He knew he was in here, so he wanted to. Uh, he wanted to show off. <laughs> Swim straight past the window. That'd be so cool. Can you imagine sitting in here waiting for a talk, and he just swims all the way over. He's definitely a show off. Swimming all the way across that. Yeah, it's definitely put on a show for us. Go right up to the window. It's quite deep as well, this is. I know with polar bears as well, they like it about six meters deep, so that is probably about about right, actually. So the animations for swimming are so cool. <laughs> It'd be really cool if they did that thing, you know, where they um, like jump. I think I've seen videos of the one in Amsterdam, uh, in Rotterdam, sorry, uh, Blydorp where there's like a rock and all the kids are like jump, jump, jump and he like proper jumps in the water which is really cool right, um, I think he might be heading over this way right he's heading over that way so I'm going to pause, I'm going to be wise I'm going to pause it while I walk around to the centre here and then we're going to unpause it and watch him watch him walk through so we've got like a little polar bear statue here so we'll have more education, more education here. Um, this will probably be like a little plaque of the name of the polar bear, which I'll grab in a sec as well. Um, just before I head that way as well. Let's... Also, yeah, this is the... Oh, that's cool. Very scenic. I feel like everything in this zoo has been very, very scenic. A lot of effort has been put into this zoo, 100%. Right, so I'm not going to unpause until I get to go around this way because there's an animal there which I do want to look at, but I don't want to unpause just yet until we've done the polar centre. Okay, so the great horned owl. So what's the... let's have a look at the fun fact. Okay, so owls have great fun frontal vision but weaker peripheral vision. This means that they can turn their head up to 270 degrees to see them or to see it around themselves. That's cool. 
Right, let's see if we can spot him. Oh, there he is. There's one. Oh, there's one ahead of I just love these A3s. So I remember that this is the little polar bear cave as well. So you can kind of sleep here as well, which is really cool. So we're going to come back to this one. I'm not going to show too much of it. So this is where I wanted to go. So the Northern Light Society Polar Center. Okay, so it's closed for a special event. So that would be our visit, I would presume. So what I wanted to do in here is I wanted to unpause because he's about here. So I'm hoping he comes around. Oh, he's just turned around. Oh, well. <laughs> oh, dear. Right, okay. Let's have a look. Right, polar bears do not need to drink water because they can... Sorry, I didn't even grab that. Right, polar bears do not need to drink water because they can produce it through digesting seal blubber. It's very efficient. So they get all their hydration from seals. Poor seals, but that is unfortunately how nature works. And you can't change that. Is he going to come over? Oh, they've just put the food in there actually, so he might head over this way. <clears throat> Let's have a look. Just going to speed him up a little bit. Uh, no, I think he's just going to have a little swim round. That's fine. We'll head upstairs and um, so I just want to see, and I want to step on the back of here as well, just to kind of visualise what it'd be like having kind of like a polar bear talk. So you get quite, oh, it's coming out now a lot. That's fine, we'll stay here. Then we can see all of it. So you could kind of be sat here, the keeper's doing a talk here, and they could potentially put some food out as well so you can get like a closer look of the polar bear. And I really like these wall to ceiling, uh, sorry, floor to ceiling. Oh look, he's using the enrichment item. If all the foods fell out for him. It's a very active polar bear. Most of the time, they're usually just sleeping in real life. I know the ones at Yorkshire can be quite, well, they can be quite crazy actually. They're like always jumping on kayaks and they um, definitely love their home at Yorkshire Wildlife Park. They are crazy bears. Ooh. I'm going to have to uh, free look that bit. <sighs> wow. This is cool. So this is the, the wedding venue. That is amazing. Let's have a look. I need to put this into nighttime mode as well. But that is crazy. Just the light work and everything. Got like a little DJ booth as well, a lot. A little dance floor. Lights reflecting weird on that. Um, even the table, lot. So much detail's gone into the table. We've got like a little bouquet of flowers, plates, candles. That'd be so cool. I'd love to be invited to a wedding like this <laughs> with all the cool lights and a pole about literally on the other side here. Where is he? We've done actually. So cool. Even a balcony as well. Let's pop that into daytime mode. I'll probably sent it dark in his fort. I'm off to bed. I am. Always over there a lot. Let's just have a look at this building because it is so impressive. <clears throat> that would be so cool. I don't know why any zoos haven't done this already. I know you can get married at the zoo, quite a few zoos in the UK actually. I know you can get married at Twycross, because I know somebody that got married at Twycross. Um, you can get married at Yorkshire Wildlife as well, I believe. I think they've got a conference centre there. Um, Chester Zoo, you can get married at, I can't remember the name of the building, but it's opposite the Oakfield pub on the side. It's a really cool, kind of like stable looking building. Um, that's pretty cool. So again, they're off stage area. So this is where the keeper prepares all the food and stuff. 
they can shut this gate and then they can come in and or they can either section polar bear off in here whilst they go in and clean the habitat. It's only going to be for a short period of time. I wanted to check the name of him as well. Uh, so Nanook. So actually, not far away from my house, there is actually a wildlife park called Peak Wildlife Park. And they have three polar bears. They have a mum and two twins. And one of them is called Nanook. And the other one is Nori. And I believe the mum is called Hope. But I know Nanook translate to polar bear in another language. Apologies, I'm not sure on the language. Um, I can have a look and pop that in as well. Right, so that is the Northern Lights Polar Centre. Very impressive build, I love that. I love these as well. I've never used these lights as well. But just so impressed with this so far. Right, okay, so we're on to the Arctic Wolves. So let's go... Let's go through here. So we've got a little bit of a underground cave system here and then we've got the bridge as well so I think this is really really cool and this as well oh, this is so cool I'm just so impressed with all the details in this so it's crazy even here look we've got like a little takeaway map as well so you can just take and kind of you know where you're going Right, so let's just check everything here. So we've seen the Arctic Fox, we've seen the Snowy Owl, the Weeping Crane, we've seen the Grey Seal, we've seen the Great Horned Owl. The only thing we haven't seen is the Arctic Wolf. So this is the area that we're in now, the Arctic Wolf. So let's have a look. Uh, no, we've gone too far out. Am I a little bit lost here? I hope not. Maybe I need to go through and that way. Because behind us there is the, the moose and beaver and then the little aviaries to the right. So I know we've got this little offshore area here as well. Yeah, so the woodland walk is this way, so I did go wrong there. Apologies about that. So let's head up this way. So yeah, this is their offshore area. I do remember this actually. Let's have a look inside actually. Yeah, so they've all got separate pens. So if we head to where the keepers would be, so obviously the keepers can kind of put them away in here whilst they go in and do, do maintenance around around the habitat. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop it into free look mode because I want to have a look. So I know there's multiple levels to this and we've got the, the bridge over as well. So obviously this bit here is off show. Um, Quite a lot of zoos usually do this if the animals just had babies or something they kind of segregate so much off and make it a little bit more private okay so we've got the wolves here so i've got two here and a baby so let's have a look so we've got andrew the alpha male and then we've got blanche the alpha female and their little wolf Oops. i can never click on the on the cubs uh, and then we've got Eula. Eula. Apologies if I said that wrong. I just want to check to see if we've got any more. Or is it just them three? Uh, no, just them three. So I think here they're actually going to use the the bridge that Sparrow's made for them. So let's unpause. There we go, look. So over the bridge they come. So I also think this would be really cool as well, you know, if he was walking under. Have a laugh. Yeah, so just kind of walk in and you can see them run in across the top. So cool. And also as well, you could actually have, you could be cheeky and have a tiny little sneak peek here. I know you're not meant to because this is meant to look like it's, um, it's broken. But I think that concludes all of the animals. So let's just recap where we've been. So, started the tour here. We came up, obviously had a look in this amazing entrance. Probably one of the best entrances I've seen so far, to be quite honest. This is truly incredible. Just the details inside as well are amazing. 
and then we came through, we started on the prairie pathway just a little bit, just to look at the prairie dogs. And then what we did is we went down the woodland walk. So we've got some exhibits here. So these were the American bullfrogs and the terrapins. Um, I won't do it in the order that I did it because then obviously we'll loop around. But we've got the red foxes here. And the red foxes off show area. We went over this bridge. And then we saw the raccoon and the skunk. And then we did the little butterfly walkthrough area here. And then we did the tiny little camper van kind of feed, uh, food area, sorry not feed. <laughs> then we've got this little transport tunnel as well. Okay, and then we've got moose and North American beavers. So this was really, really cool. I really, really liked this. Um, and then we came around. So we're not going to go through there just yet. We've got a couple of aviaries here. So we've got three aviaries, three different birds in. So again, these are really impressive. I love the style of like continuous aviary all the way through. Oh, we've got the, the moose right up near the fence there. Okay, and then obviously from there we went back around to see the red foxes. But then here, so this is the other end of the prairie pathway. So we came and saw the pronghorned, antelopes and the bisons. And let's go the way that we went. So this is back to where we were. Okay, and then you've got like a little food court and a seating area over here. So again this little teepee and this is just incredible. So this is a bison, obviously the animal we have there. Okay, and then from here what we did is we went up to here. We saw the wolves, so these are the ones that are named after the crystals. So we've got Jet, Jasper and Onyx. And then we went through to see Huckle, the grizzly bear, who is actually out and about that. Oh, he's just sat down. Let's have a look at him. So this is Huckle. He's a very cool bear. Oh. So he's just cool little guy. Very cool. Oh, there we go, off you guys. <clears throat> then we have the cougar in here, so I can't see her at the minute. Oh, she's asleep again. So she's in the same position as where she was when we came last time. I presume these guys like to sleep a lot. And then from here we have the little rock garden. So this is really cool and really effective. So there's a couple of different animal statues. Um, kind of little pond here, another map, and another A3. And then we've also got the, the wolf viewing tower. So this is the entrance to the, the transport tunnel, which goes under here. This is a bit where I showed you where you can get the animals in and out. And then we've got the doll sheep mountain. So this goes all the way up underneath the mountain path and then this is their off show area and then we've got the little mountain side hike all the way up so again just these details here are crazy so this is just so it looks so realistic so this is the kind of thing that you would see and then we came through we went through the little mining shaft and then we walked across the front here and then around here we've got quite possibly my favorite Avery so far I think the location of this is really, really cool. Ooh. So it kind of goes underneath a little bit and it comes comes around, which is really cool. Okay, and then from there, so we went over and we saw the reindeers here. So they stretch back to there as well. And then the Boreal Cafe and Gift Shop. So again this is cool, so you've got the gift shop on this side and the cafe restaurant here with outdoor seating. And then off stage area for the reindeers as well here. And then from here we went up and we saw this area here, so we've got the free, right he's out now. Oh, he's got a little, um, I think they're called signets actually, that's what I was trying to find last time, not a baby saw. Um, a little signet following him, or her sorry. Him. We've got two two little babies following him around. So I presume he's the dad. 
and then into the Arctic zone. So we've got the Arctic foxes here. This habitat is really, really cool. I really like this because it's kind of got like the, the Avery style at the back as well. So you can kind of see them from here. So really, really cool. Then we had another Avery here. So this was the Snowy Owl. So again, these bird packs, love them. Um, but we are missing real birds, which we desperately need. <laughs> and then we have the Whooping Crane, I believe it was. Was it the Whooping Crane? Yes, the Whooping Crane. Good memory. So again, this is another very impressive habitat. Love this. I feel like every angle you look at in this zoo is just... You could get a picture anywhere and it'd be really good. Like just the the fort and everything's gone so far into this, it's really really good. And then we made our way down to the cold dome. So this is really cool. So this is the bit that I imagine the zoo kind of had like investment and they managed to create like a really modern space. So on this side we've got the king penguins. So these are really cool. Um, I know we didn't look in the backstage area but Oh my god, this is so cool. Kind of reminds me of a swimming pool. Well, that's really cool. Oh, look at them. I'm really excited to go in there. Love how these guys run. I've got a little baby one as well. Oh. Then we've got all the education. And then also a polar bear viewing area here. If he ever decides to come around this area. I don't think he does, but um, I've not seen him here just yet. Over to that because I've still got the swan highlighted. And then we've got the offstage area for the seals. And then the indoor area for the seals for the start of their um their water area. And we've got some more outdoor seating in front of the, the cold dome, which is really cool. Again, really modern kind of plaza. And then here, so we've got a little divider as well to obviously stop the, the polar bear getting into the into the seals because obviously you've got a friend and food which we don't want. And then let's see if we could just spot one of the seals. There he is now. I love these guys, they're so cool. Oh so adorable. Okay. And then from there, we had a look in the polar bear centre. Oh, he's very active. We're straight in the water again. And then we have the, the viewing area here as well. So again, he's putting on another show. <laughs> and then more backstage area here. And then we have the Northern Lights Polar Centre. So I think so far, this might be my absolute favourite building. I love this. I just love the multi-purpose of it. So you've got the education level and then you've got like a venue hire wedding reception as well as the offstage area for the polar bears, which I think is really, really cool. And then you've got this really cool Arctic Fox. So this is the one with the bridge over as well. And this is the offstage areas. And then you've got an Avery here with an owl in. Let me just check which owl it was, sorry. The Great Horned Owl, so that's in here. Again, another bird which is missing from from the game. But that is the overall tour that we took. Um, I hope you guys really, really enjoyed that one because I've really, really enjoyed myself touring this zoo. Um, definitely love to check out some more of Sparrow's zoos. I've got a couple more zoos lined up as well. So um, drop a subscribe and catch me on the next one. Cheers, guys. Thank you.